One thing I forgot to mention in the last video, which is that when you're looking at a box plot, of course, you're seeing the center as the center line, right? That's the average. The spread is the length of the box, right? From the Q1 to the Q3. And the range is, of course, the min to the max. But you can also see the shape. See next page. <laughs> because I have them all drawn out for you. All right, shape of a distribution can be skewed right or positively skewed, right? Because remember, this is the positive side of the number line and that's the negative side of the number line. So if you're positively skewed, that means that the whisker is longer on the right-hand side, the upper whisker, right? Or the upper up above, or the box is larger, which is not the case in this side, in this particular problem. So that long whisker right there means that it's positively skewed or skewed right. Then when it's symmetric, the whiskers and the boxes are approximately equal. And that's not perfect necessarily, but they should be roughly equal. Now we don't know if it's bell-shaped or uniform. Symmetric, um, there's actually a lot of symmetric shapes. <laughs> so we don't know which shape it's taking, but we do know that it's roughly symmetric. And then skewed left would have a longer side over here. So this is longer or this is longer or both. Same thing here. Longer here on this low side and longer here on the low side. So the lower or the left left side or the lower side is longer. So in symmetric they're roughly equal. In pot skewed right these would be longer on the right side on the high side or high side right here. Um, this one or this one should be longer. Okay. Now the question does arise. Um, there's a couple things. <laughs> what happens if you have a longer whisker on one side and then the longer half of the box is on the other side, which actually happens just a little bit up here on this one. That's a little bit larger, like just a touch larger. And then this is really long. And the answer is you have to make a judgment call. Um, you basically, um, basically base it on whichever is the more drastically different. Um, usually it's the whisker, but not always. Um, but you usually look to the whisker because that's usually a more dramatic difference. And one other thing, and it cannot be stressed enough, remember that outlier dots are part of the whisker. So if you have a conflict, look for the more drastically different to make your judgment call. But remember that outliers are part of whiskers. They count. So they can be um, they should be considered as part of that whisker length. So for example, if I look here, I know I have dots here, but that whole piece is considered, right? So that's why this data set is skewed left. As a matter of fact, I didn't ask it, but I could right here, right now. Um, if I want the shape, question mark, we would say skewed left. for sure. It has outliers on the left side and has a long whisker on the left. Long whisker on the left and a larger box on the left. But the long whisker is enough. Right? Longer whisker. Right? It's longer than it is on the right. That's the important part. Okay. All right. So never forget those dots count as part of that whisker. Very important. All right. Now let's put it all together in a nice little table. All right, so this type is skewed left or negatively skewed. You can say either one. Some books write negatively skewed a lot. Some books say skewed left a lot, either way. Skewed left, negatively skewed. Now. The whisker would go off with the tail. So if you were going to draw a box and whisker plot, it'll look something like this. Like that. Longer whisker on the left, larger box on the left, or both. You'd love it if it was both. The mean will be significantly less than the median. I don't mean by a little bit. I mean significant amount, right? Which is a judgment call yet again. It's how you know you're not in algebra class. We make a lot of judgment calls. If it's skewed left like this is, then you should use the median because the median is resistant. 
to that skewing, right? And you should also use the IQR. We saw that a couple pages ago because the IQR is also resistant to skewing, right? So if your data set is skewed, you want to use the median and the IQR. They go together. And honestly, it's true for skewed right as well. So let me go over here to the far right and let's deal with that because that's skewed right. It has a tail over here, just like this one over here has that tail. Actually, I think I'll do this in purple. I'll save green for the symmetric middle part. Okay, so we have a tail over here. So this is skewed right, also known as positively skewed because on the x-axis, right is the positively, um, positive side. Okay, for a box plot, it should look like um, little whisker. Let me draw a box here. The box or the whisker on the high side should be larger. It just occurred to me, it gets confusing for students with the vertical ones and box plots are very often drawn vertically. So I'm actually gonna put a vertical one in here too. So I moved this one up a little bit. So there's the left skewed, see the left, or negatively skewed, see how it's low? And then for a high skew, right, right skewed, it would be the high side that's long. And then we'll have a box in here and it'd be, that box would be larger on the high side and little whisker like that. So remember this is the positive side, the high side. Right, the same thing up here. Right? The upper values are longer. The right values are longer. So upper goes with right, lower goes with lower, goes with left. All right, now this would mean that the mean is greater than the median. Right, the mean is the bigger thing. Right, alligator eats the bigger thing, right? Chomp, chomp, chomp. So the mean is larger, right? And in skewed left, the mean is smaller. So again, we would use the median as our measure of center. It's fairer because it's resistant, right? And IQR, right, which is Q3 minus Q1. It's not a difficult calculation, but it's resistant to outliers and skewing. I just rewrote those ones over on the left to give them a little because, so that way you know why you're doing it. All right, now last but not least, what about the middle? Okay, so if it's symmetric, we don't actually know if it's bell-shaped. Bell-shaped is just one type of symmetric graph, but there are other symmetric graphs. So let me just real quick. Um, symmetric graphs, you could have a uniform graph. Looks like that, right? So it's uniform. That is another type of symmetry. Um, you could have a bimodal graph. So it goes up and comes back down, right? So that's another possibility. There, there are several types of symmetric graphs. So it doesn't have to be normal, um, just as a side note. Symmetric alternatives. Right, there they are. Okay, but if they are symmetric, what I do know is that the box and whisker plot should be even from both sides, roughly, right? So the two box halves should be roughly the same. The two whiskers should be roughly the same. If I draw it vertically, so if I put an or here, I'll make a box and then a whisker like that. So roughly the same, roughly equal. That would mean that the mean and the median are roughly the same. They're not gonna be exactly the same. This is statistics class. Nothing works out perfectly, <laughs> but they should be approximately equal. Now, what is the decision between approximate versus greater versus less? That's a judgment call, right? So you can make a note. Um, is a judgment call. that you have to make, right? right? Whether it's less, whether it's equal, because we know they're not gonna be exactly equal. So are they close enough that you can count them as basically the same? 
probably. I mean, it depends. You have to make that judgment call and live by your con live by the consequences of it. Let's put it that way. Now, if it is symmetric, then we get to use the mean, which is our favorite. We like to use the mean. <laughs> so the mean makes us happy. And if we use the mean, then we get to use the standard deviation, which is the measure of spread. Now, keep in mind, there's two means. There's mu or x bar, right? Mu goes with sigma, s goes with x bar. So there are two types. Mu and sigma are the population values. X bar and s are the sample ones. Now keep in mind what we just saw. We saw that if it's symmetric, then we want the mean and the standard deviation, right? But if it's skewed, either skewed left or skewed right, we want the mean and the interquartile range. So if you will, I'll highlight them. These two go with the, these two values. And symmetric goes with mean and standard deviation. And that table is a nice recap of all of these ideas from sections 3, 1, 3, 2, and 3, 4, and 3, 5. So I would keep it handy for studying.